Hello everyone, my name is Arden, and today I'm bringing you my top 10 worst modern Marvel crossovers. Yes, some crossovers are good, and maybe eventually I will do a top 10 list of good crossovers if you guys want that as well. But for now, let's get into nerd raid mode and look at the crossovers that sucked. More importantly, I will explain just why I think these crossovers just didn't work. Now, keep in mind this is just an opinion, and if you like a crossover that's on this list, doesn't mean you were wrong. It just means I'm a cynical baby who scrutinizes comics way too much. Now the rules are simple. The crossover must have been published in the last 10 years or so, and must include more than two titles or more than two groups of characters. Other than that, pretty much everything is fair game. So without further delay, here is my top 10 worst modern Marvel crossovers. Number 10. Original Sin. The Watcher is murdered, and people learn stuff. But who killed him? Nick Fury on the moon with the space laser. Also, Thor has a sister. Newt Cage's dad was cool once. This person exists. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so this is a bad one to start off with, only because we just finished this crossover. My reaction to this one is very recent, so I can't look back on this one with the same hindsight over what the consequences will be of this event, like I can the other crossovers on this list. To Original Sin's credit, there is a lot working here. It will have an effect on things to come, and I enjoyed the art by and large, and somewhere underneath all the wasted time and drawn out plot threads, there is a really good story here. But that's the problem, there are over 50 Original Sin comics in total. That's a lot, and a too little of it was of any value or worth reading. Most of these stories had no substance to them whatsoever. Here are the secrets revealed to Iron Man and the Hulk. You dick, you tampered with the Gamma Bomb that made me turn into the Hulk. No, I actually reduced the explosion radius. Oh, well, now I can turn into the Hulk and retain my intellect. Oh. And that's it. Four issues of nothing for $20. This was supposed to be a crossover unlike any other. A murder mystery. I was so excited to see something even just a little different from the usual crossover shtick. And this feeling of disappointment is the reason that Original Sin is number 10 on my list. Number 9. Avengers vs. X-Men. On an alien planet, the sky is engulfed in a bright light. Boy asks for his father, who comforts him as the Phoenix destroys the alien world. It is learned that the Phoenix is heading for Earth, seeking Hope Summers as a host. Hope is the first and only mutant born after the near extinction of the mutant race, and is viewed as the future savior of mutants. The Avengers wish to take Hope into custody, ultimately leading to all-out war between Avengers and the X-Men. When the Phoenix arrives, it winds up split into five parts between Cyclops, Emma Frost, Magic, Colossus, and Namor. Dubbing themselves the Phoenix Five, the Avengers become fugitives while the X-Men remake the world into a better place. However, the power soon corrupts the Phoenix Five, and they turn on one another until only Cyclops remains with the full power of the Phoenix Force. Cyclops is eventually defeated, but not before he kills his father figure and mentor, Professor X. In the aftermath of the battle, new mutants are born on Earth for the first time in years. So, while Original Sin disappointed me, this one actually impressed me quite a bit. I thought when they announced it we were going to get another tired story of heroes fighting heroes, but it turns out this was actually a lot of fun. The fights were big and epic and the art was just perfect for the entire series. And the crossover has some genuinely great moments. I especially like one scene in the final chaotic moments of the event. We see things from the perspective of Cyclops and realize he has absolutely no control over his actions anymore, having fully been lost to the power of the Phoenix Force. It's a scene that really hammers home the frantic nature at this point in the event and just how out of control things have really gotten. So, why do I consider it bad enough to be on the worst list? Well, for two big reasons. First, this event is way too long. At an overblown 12 issues for this horror series and 75 issues in total, this event is a perfect example of way too much of a good thing. After the first act, things really started to feel slow and started being so drawn out that I was starting to get really bored of this story. This is a shame because some big things happen here, some of which I really enjoy, and we are finally past the long-standing plot thread of mutants being on the verge of extinction. But then there's the other major problem with this series. I actually really like most of the ending, but killing off Professor X has to rank as one of the most overused plot lines in X-Men history. This has happened so many times that at this point, I am certain that I have read more X-Men comics without Professor X involved with the team than stories with him involved in the story at all. 
I just wish they'd stop killing off this character again and again and again. It's just ridiculous and left this crossover on such a sour note that I simply can't ignore it. Number 8. Messiah Complex A mutant is born in a remote town in Alaska. At a time when only a few mutants are left in the world, the X-Men rush to find her. However, a militant group known as the Purifiers view this newborn as a threat, and the genetically engineered mutant hunting monster known as Predator X is also hot in the trail of this new mutant. The problem becomes even worse when Bishop betrays the X-Men, as it is revealed the new baby will one day kill thousands in a world which leads to the dark events of Bishop's future. Ultimately, Cable takes the baby into the future to care for her and escape the many people who want her dead. Bishop tries to stop them but accidentally shoots Professor X instead. Cyclops darkly declares there are no more X-Men while Cable appears in the future with the baby as he thinks to himself, here comes the hard part. Okay, so this was a crossover that when I first read, I really liked. There are still parts that I enjoy about this. Cable's adventures would continue in his own solo series, which ended up being really great and to this day is one of my favorite all-time solo titles out there. And this was a pretty cool cross overall that made good use of the various characters involved and the titles being crossed over. So why don't I like this title anymore? Well, for one thing, I'm really not a fan of the art depicted here. I find it ugly and cluttered and just doesn't have those well-defined edges that I'd consider to be par for the course at this point in the age of modern artwork. But the real problem with this crossover is just how dark and grim everything was at the time period. This was just not a great period for X-Men fans. With only a few mutants left in the world, things were really dark for the X-Men team. And to me, this was the lowest point in the team for a very long time, with the story ending with the X-Men just outright breaking up. Oh, and Professor X died again. <sighs> Looking back on things, I just can't get past this story's overly dark tones and reliance on overused plot lines. Number 7. Battle of the Atom Alright, this one's tough. Time travel, time travel, time travel. Time travel? No time travel. There, that's the crossover as I remember it at least. So this one I found disappointing. It was already a bit questionable to bring back the original X-Men to the present time period, but that actually worked out quite nicely, and I still enjoy all new X-Men to this day. The crossover, on the other hand, really didn't work for me. It wound up being confusing and ultimately a rather pointless story that introduced some cool future versions of the teams of Brotherhood and the X-Men, but nothing really comes of it. Now, we would see the future Brotherhood again in the all-new X-Men story, but in my opinion, that just made things worse, and now I'm just sick of the whole time travel thing as a plot device in X-Men comics, and I'd rather we just forget about it for a little while and move on to better stories. Number 6. Cataclysm Okay, don't blame yourself if you haven't heard of this one before. In the alternate world of the Ultimate Marvel Universe, Galactus is pulled into this universe and begins to merge with his ultimate counterpart. Hungrier than ever, he seeks to devour the universe's Earth. Ultimate versions of the heroes we know dry trying to stop him, until Kitty Pride is able to put Galactus through a big hole. The end! So, there's not much to say on this one. Oh sure, it was really cool to have a crossover going up against the big man himself, but that's the problem with Galactus. He's just too powerful to be stopped, and the way he is finally stopped in this story is... Well, it's very silly and pointless and just doesn't make any sense to me. Other than that, this was just an excuse to kill off more characters in the Ultimate publication line, which has, by the way, been done way too much already. So, it did have some cool moments, but they were few and far between, and this was just another sign of the continuing downfall of the once great Ultimate Universe. Number 5. House of M. A new version of Marvel exists after the Scarlet Witch's manipulations alter reality to create a world where mutants are not only accepted, but reign supreme over humans. However, as heroes begin to get their memory back, Magneto is confronted and Scarlet Witch's actions are soon revealed. Traumatized over losing her children, Scarlet Witch declares, no more mutants. Well, this isn't the worst crossover on the list, but it is getting there. This story by itself isn't very good, basically amounting to a poor man's Age of Apocalypse, and that's it. 
Nothing memorable happens aside from some stuff with Spider-Man, which was cool, but not really substantial in the long run. And that would only make for a lackluster crossover, something not something that I'd consider the very worst, except for one important reason. The ending. Oh boy, this ending. By itself, it wasn't actually that bad of an idea. Basically all but the most popular mutants got depowered, and the mutant race would from here on out basically be on the verge of extinction. It would be a way for Marvel to clear out some of the hundreds of extra mutant characters that had cluttered the world of X-Men at this point, while also maintaining the core characters that had become popular over the many years it's been active. Diehard fans would get upset about this, but they always kind of are, so it shouldn't have been that big a deal, and meanwhile the stakes for X-Men and the mutant race would be higher than ever before. But this move almost broke the X-Men. I mentioned in Messiah Complex why I found X-Men comics became overly d grim and dark, and this is the reason why. It got to a point that this was so depressing reading these comics that I had to stop for a couple years. And by the way, this went on for eight long years. Eight years! That's a very long time in the world of comics, and shackled to only using existing characters, you can tell the writers started to get boxed in and the comic series suffered for it. We started to get some controversial stories or other stuff that I just didn't feel was very well thought out at all. Eventually this problem was fixed in Avengers vs X-Men, and we got some great new mutant characters because of that. But even to this day I find the X-Men comics just can't seem to reach their former levels of glory. Don't get me wrong, things are much better than they used to be for the X-Men, but I still don't think they're back to the levels where Grant Morrison and Joss Whedon were writing for the series and everything was just really cool and awesome and explored some awesome ideas and just felt epic and big. So for so severely damaging the X-Men storyline, House of M ranks as my fifth worst crossover. Number 4, Avengers Disassembled. So the Scarlet Witch is depressed after her children die and decides to use her reality warping powers to manipulate events leading to the breakup of the Avengers through various circumstances. I don't have much to say about this one other than I didn't like it. The crossover kicked off an era of Marvel of dark plot points and dismantling the legacy of the Avengers, the loss of mutants, and a shift towards restructuring Marvel for the modern era. This sort of thing was, in broad strokes, necessary, but it didn't have to be done in the most depressing way possible or with plotting confusing plot lines like it was done in Avengers Disassembled and House of M. Now, there are a handful of cool moments here and there. I'll always remember seeing She-Hulk go ballistic, and that's kind of neat because this character doesn't typically hulk out like her cousin. But that's not worth it for the long stretches of boring, confusing plot lines with art and storytelling I found very depressing. It's best just to pretend this sort of thing never happened and that they, Marvel didn't attempt to assassinate Scarlet Witch's character in the early 2000s like it did. Number 3. Secret Invasion The Skrulls invade, and bad things happen. They are stopped, but Wasp dies for a while, and now everyone thinks Norman Osborn has saved the day. And that's pretty much it, really. This is my definition of a bad crossover. I hated most of the art, which I found cluttered and messy. I didn't care for most of the tie-ins, which were just pointless excursions into the Skrulls attacking something. Then the heroes come back and stop them. Yay! And that's every crossover and tie-in of this entire event. The crossover itself was just an overall depressing Odeiro that makes me just so, so tired and annoyed. Yeah, it was kind of cool how Norman Osborn took over S.H.I.E.L.D. for a while after this, but that's a story for another video and an entirely different crossover itself. This event otherwise was a tough crossover to get through and one that I found just impossible to enjoy. There's too much of Skrulls overpowering all the heroes, so much so that I felt by the time things started to turn around for Earth in general, uh, the comic had already lost me by the time they were resorting to using quick and easy plot devices to wrap things up, which was just the final nail in the coffin for me. The writers used this event as an easy excuse to kill off some characters while also bringing back some other characters who had been replaced by Skrulls in, before the invasion. And at the end of the day, this isn't really a comic that's had much lasting impact. I don't remember it fondly, and I don't know anyone else who really thinks of this as their all-time favorite crossover. Uh, not only did I find this a uh, poor, meaningless read, but nothing big or epic happens or anything I'd consider that memorable. 
and if a comic isn't meaningful or fun, then it just isn't worth reading. Speaking of which... Number 2. Age of Ultron It's the future, and Ultron reigns supreme. Many heroes are dead, and Earth has largely been conquered. That sucks. Wolverine and the Invisible Woman go back in time and kill Hank Pym, but that only makes things worse. So they go back in time again and convince Hank Pym to build a, a failsafe within Ultron, and he is stopped in the present. So basically it's the plot of that to the future too, but with more latex. Okay, I hate this crossover. Everything I've mentioned before about what I don't like in the previous crossovers applies here to an even greater extent. The story is overly dark and depressing. The crossover has no lasting impact on continuity, other than it being an excuse to set up the Cataclysm event in another universe and to introduce Angela. And overall, this is just a bad, cliché story that I just don't like. So nothing meaningful is happening here and certainly not anything I'd find fun. I just don't see the point of this event. I don't see the appeal of this crossover. I hate everything about it. I can't even think of a single redeeming quality to it, apart from a handful of alternating universe stuff uh, that I've just seen before in better ways. The only thing that I can hope is that the movie Avengers Age of Ultron will share its name and nothing else with this story, because this crossover, to me, is just rotten to the core. Number 1. Ultimatum. Magneto's kids die and he gets a hold of Thor's hammer. Then everybody dies and it sucks. Okay, so Secret Invasion and Age of Ultron are bad and in my opinion are about as bad as the mainstream continuity crossovers have ever been. But this crossover, this crossover, this is some of the worst writing and art I have ever, ever seen. It is just as bad as comics have gotten as far as I have ever even heard of or read. Uh, frankly, I could even do a whole video going over every single thing wrong with this crossover. Every issue, panel by panel. I hate it. <laughs> but I'll try and keep things short and simple and my insane nerd rage to a minimum here. This is a dark depressing story with so many character deaths. Magneto, Professor X, Cyclops, Daredevil, Spider-Man, Doctor Doom, Doctor Strange, Wasp, Dazzler, Beast, Nightcrawler, Blob, Thor, Scarlet Witch, Angel, Wolverine, Emma Frost, Hank Pym, Psylocke, and many, many others are thought to be dead or inactive as a result of these events. And by the way, that's many confirmed deaths. If you haven't noticed, that's also including Professor Xavier, who has died three times so far on this crossover list, and technically the fourth if you count House of M. See what I mean about this being an overused plot point? Something that just comes up again and again every time Marvel wants to just try and raise the stakes artificially? And if you haven't noticed, the art is actually disgusting. It's not bad in terms of style or technique, and I think the artists are very talented, but the what they're drawing is just horrible, and these images are terrible, brutal, gory stuff that have resulted in an already horrible tone to an ex already pretty bad story. It's just awful, and I'm sorry I had to show it, but I feel that's the only way I can, can convey to you guys just how bad things are in this event. And this crossover decidedly broke the Ultimate Marvel Universe. Before this, this was a great line of comics that retold the Marvel characters in a more modernized light and was able to depict characters in new, interesting, and refreshing, great ways. It was a new publishing line that was really popular. After this event, Marvel could never do anything with this line of comics because they didn't have the same characters that all these writers had worked really hard to create and develop. So the sales started plummeting and Nothing that they tried, people really responded to, with the possible exception of the eventual introduction of Miles Morales, a character who I do really like and am glad exists. This was a devastating event that to this day I consider to be the absolute worst in the world of comic books. So, that's my list of Marvel's worst major crossover events. Do you guys agree with my choices? What would you consider the worst in crossovers? Let me know in the comments section. And, as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.